Slice of Life video production strives to bring the snowmobile enthusiast the most exciting snowmobile action to video, from mild to wild. From snow cross action to hill climb action, the riders provide the action, we provide the show. Slice of Life video production. To order, call 1-800-USA-TAKE. Jackson Hole, Wyoming. No doubt one of the premier vacation spots for the winter enthusiasts. Just to the south of town sits a steep faced slope, better known as Snow King Mountain, the home of Snow King Resort and Jackson's first developed ski area. But for one weekend a year, the face of Snow King Mountain will see a different type of winter enthusiast. Thousands of snowmobile race fans litter the mountainside to watch perhaps the most extreme snowmobile racing event to be held anywhere. The direction of travel, up, straight up. Rock and roll.
This was all just a dream Now sit back, relax And watch a man and machine Chris the top, out of dream As a thousand fans of call and scream As they climb the smoky The first two days of this three-day event are spent qualifying for Sunday's main event. And when the smoke clears and the snow dust settles, three will be crowned king of the mountain. One in stock, one in trail mod stock, Friday's qualifying runs for the stock and trail mod stock machines proved to be a challenge in itself. The course is run on the lower portion of exhibition and is based on time, not distance. The course was in good condition with plenty of snow base, and new snow was falling. The first few classes of racers running the course had minimal problems negotiating the lower portion of the mountain, but later in the day, the lower exhibition became extremely icy. What was once a course with minor difficulty became very challenging. Horsepower was no longer the factor today. Driver skill and luck either took you through the top timing lights or sent you back down the mountain. It's time for the trail mod machines. In 1992, the introduction of trail mod machines hit the circuit and brought a whole new dimension to hill climb competition. What is a trail mod machine? It's every snowmobiler's dream. It's a kick butt, pinch your seat, hold on tight, wild ride of a snowmobile that appears stock. Take a stock machine, a bunch of high performance parts and accessories from the top aftermarket companies, and a knowledgeable mechanic that can make it all work together and you'll have yourself a sled that will take you places you were never meant to go.
Let's take a closer look at the course. The course is laid out on exhibition, an expert-only ski run. And its claim to fame? It's the steepest ski run in North America. The profile of the mountain shows why this is such an extreme challenge. The first catwalk located midway is the point that the timing lights are tripped by the racer's snowmobile. What happens between the first catwalk and the second catwalk can make or break the racer's attempt on the remaining portion of the course. Lose your momentum and speed here, you'll be lucky to crest the next catwalk. The second catwalk indicated the start of the danger zone. From here on up, the pitch of the mountain increases drastically. The moguls are large, very large, and the terrain can change your direction of travel in a heartbeat. The direction least preferred, down. The further up you go, the steeper it gets. This is the extreme danger zone, the wall. This is what separates those who do and those who do not. Once the racer makes the third catwalk, he must still negotiate what is known as the chute. Make it through this section and you join the ranks of few. For day two, the top portion of the mountain is open for the qualifying of the modified machines. Friday's snowfall has deposited a new blanket of fresh powder at the higher elevations of the course. The mountain is in great shape. The course is laid out, and it's time to get on with the second day of qualifying, the running of the modified classes. The first racer to put tracks on upper exhibition was Kim Ropaletto, number 32. How was it being the first one up the hill? Uh, I was a little nervous, but uh, it was a lot smoother, I think, than later on in the class. And we picked a pretty good line, and I, and I got with it, you know, right off the start. Right, it went, it, you think it's going to get tougher here in the, in the going with uh, with the ice coming out? Yeah, yeah, it'll start rutting and making bigger holes, and then the rocks will start showing. And, and I, I might have had the best of the day right there. Bad luck quick. Thanks. All right, thank you.
with seven machines left to run in Mod Class 1. Only Murray Archibald, number 53, would make it past the third catwalk and crest the top. The rest would fail. Jackson Hole, Wyoming, the birthplace of snowmobile hill climb competition. The event was first held 20 years ago and is considered to have been the first organized hill climb race. What started out as a local contest between the Jackson locals and their neighbors from Pinedale has evolved into what is now known as the World Championships. Let's talk with some of the people directly responsible for this race. Well, as you know, this is our uh, 20th annual. Uh, I'm one of the founders of the event back in 1976 when, uh, oh, in the mountains when you're riding snowmobiles, everybody's always claiming they can, their sled can go higher and such. And uh, a group of us just got together and said, well, let's put on a little competition. And I think that first year, uh, we just invited guys to come over here and there were like 32 entries, if I remember right. And, now we have over 250 a year that compete here at the uh, World Championships. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to be the first two-time winner. I won it in 1977 and 1982. And uh, still the race director here. I think this is my 12th year as being uh, the race director over the course of the, the 20 years. They just started with a bunch of old timers from Jackson and uh, Pinedale uh, getting together and hosting an event. It, that happened probably about 22, 23 years ago. And then after the Snow Devils uh, got, or got organized and actually had entry fees and entry forms, we figure there's been about 20 years of actual competition like that. It's 20th annual hill climb. How many years have you been? Uh, either competing or working at it? It's been about 18 years for me. I rode a lot of years and helped announce and help them on the starting line, just whatever I can. I live south of here in Pinedale, and I think it's one of the most premier events there is around. Really enjoy it. Okay, Rick, this is the 20th annual hill climb. Uh, how many years have you been doing this? 20. 
think I'm the only one that's done it all 20 years. <laughs> well, how many more years you continue or want to continue to doing this? Well, I want to continue forever. Don't know how long, much longer my body will take it. As the racing competitiveness grew, so did the machines. In 1982, the course was moved from Kelly's Alley to the current location, Exhibition, and the project sleds began to appear. In the mid-80s, some very extravagant hardware began pulling into town in an attempt to conquer the mountain. Everything from triple track driven snowmobiles to twin engine machines. Don Goat showed up with an 1100cc four cylinder motorcycle engine strapped in a custom built long track snow machine in hopes to reclaim his one time king of the mountain victory back in 1980. How about the guy that showed up with the inline twin track machine? The back track was lowered and raised with a hydraulic ram. And then there was that super long track skidoo that appeared to be about 25 feet in length. When it comes to reminiscing about project sleds, we could not leave out the double vision machine. Stan Checkett had taken two 500 Polaris Centurions, punched out the motors to 605s, and bolted the machines side by side. Two machines, four skis, two tracks, two throttles, two brakes, and one driver. What will happen this weekend and what has happened for the past 19 years has taken snowmobiling to a new dimension. Climbing Snow King Mountain, once thought to be impossible, was dethroned in 1986 by Ward Barnes. Since that time, many sleds have crested the peak of Snow King Mountain. In 1993, the first stock machine crested the top of Snow King, thanks to Tom Roby and a borrowed Indy Storm. Day three. Those racers who have qualified for today's finals have been preparing for this moment since last year's world championship. Months of preparation have gone into the machines and drivers. And for the racers and their teams, it will be all over in less than 60 seconds and 1,600 vertical feet. Today, these men will risk it all. Many will take it beyond their limits in search of that ever so elusive chance to take home the victory as they make their assault on Snow King Mountain. 101 machines will take on the mountain today, all with the same goal, win their class and then move on to the challenge for king of the mountain. For many, anything less will not do. The stock classes are brought to you by the Virginian Lodge, the racing headquarters for the World Championship Hill Climb and continuous supporter of the event, offering all the amenities to make your stay in Jackson a pleasant one. Seven riders qualified in the F-Stock class for Sunday's main event. Number 125, Todd Thompson, took his MXZ to a third place finish. Number 26, Steve Hill, pushed his way to second, while a local Jackson rider, number 180, Kevin Shearthos, took home top honors. class saw Ken Huseman, number 147, take his machine to a third place finish, while number 85, Matt Lube, would take second. The 
and Jason Adams, number 80, would claim the fame with first place. With 14 riders qualifying in the D-Stock class, the competition is tough. Norm Hebert, number 70, an 18-year-old from British Columbia, I marked the entire group for his victory. Second place went to C.J. Pennington, while number two, Jay almost scrapped his way to a third place. tough was the competition in C-Stock? Just ask last year's stock king of the mountain, Kirk Hibbert. This year, he would take a backseat to such names as third place finisher Rob Weston. Second place, Scott Albertson. Winner, number 147, Ken Huseman, who set the high mark for the day in the stock classes. With the mountain terrain beginning to change with each pass of the machine, the V-Stock class was getting interesting. When the snow dust cleared, number 172, Gil Winters finished third. Number 98, Kevin Mintz finished second and Brett Rasmussen, number 27, and his unique riding style finished with top honors. Big sleds with big ponies. The A-stock class is always interesting. Donnie Williamson had what appeared to be a great run going. Could this have been only the second stock machine to ever crest the top of this mountain? It very well could have been, but not this year. Number 59's misfortune would lead to a disappointing third place finish. Speaking of stock sleds over the top, 
Two years ago, number 179, Tom Roby, on a borrowed machine, took the first and only stock machine to the top. Tom's brother and friend had lots of faith that it could happen again. Can I cost you? $725. All right. He's our man today. That would earn Roby a second place, but the machine would suffer defeat. Wow. Do you think he borrowed that machine too? Number 107, Rick Ward, high marks Tom Roby by only a few feet and earns the gold in this class, plus returns with his sled intact. <laughs> Trail Mod 1 is sponsored by Highmark Performance. Highmark Performance breathes new life into your Articat or Polaris snowmobile. The EFI Wastegate turbocharging system is available for both Polaris and Articat snowmobiles. For more information, contact Highmark at 801-264 8656. Only four of the eight Trail Mod 1 machines would crest the peak on this day. Hylam, number 203, lost his momentum and traction at the third catwalk and things got ugly. One of the hill health even shared in Brett's agony of defeat. Rod Coonan found out why the least preferred direction of travel is down. Roby took his machine to the top, but he remained out of the top three. Number 39, Justin Mueller took third. Eric Heat battled for second. Six, Darren Gould climbed his way to a well-earned first place. Trail Mod 2 is sponsored by Tri-City Polaris, named Dealer of the Year by Polaris. Tri-City Polaris is in the business to help you and your machine perform better. Tri-City Polaris sells Polaris ATVs, snowmobiles, and watercraft. Tri-City Polaris is also the exclusive Utah dealer for Exus enclosed aluminum trailers. Need parts and accessories? Tri-City Polaris has got them. Call 801-298-8081. Tri-City Polaris, located in Centerville, Utah. Proud sponsors of Rick Ward and Darren Gould.
Mark Thompson would take his ski doo to the top for a third place finish. Number 41, Kirk Hibbert, would manage to pull off a well-earned second place. Number 107, Rick Ward, put together his best run of the day to take home the gold. WMS Enterprises, custom machine work for full computer numerical controlled capabilities. Lightweight race components are our specialty. Small production and prototype runs welcome. WMS builds titanium shafts, titanium hill climb paddles, and other traction products. We also build the lightning rail trailing arms, mega cooler heat exchangers, custom cast extended chain cases, Mad Max torque arms, aluminum brake hubs, and much more all designed with the racer and performance recreational rider in mind. With the mod sleds coming up next, the action always proves to be exciting. The Mod 1 class was dominated by Norris Brown, who took his Rotax 440 to the top for the victory. while number 125, Todd Thompson, and number 48, Dale Hutchings, found a second and third. Exus Aluminum Trailers, located in Soda Springs, Idaho, has been bringing you quality trailers for over 20 years. If you're looking for quality, look for Exus, because Exus supports the sport. The sleds are getting faster and the course is getting rougher. The Mod 2 machines are carving their way to the top with what seems to be minimal effort. Travis Zollinger from Logan, Utah, turned in an impressive ride to claim the third spot in Mod 2. Number 51, Kirk Williamson, ran one of the smoothest rides of the day to claim second. David Shepard ran last in this class and managed to edge out both Zollinger and Williamson to claim the fame from Mod 2. The Mod 3 class is sponsored by PSI Performance of Wild Rose, Wisconsin. Contact PSI Performance for all your performance needs. From trail to race, mild to wild. PSI pipe and porting packages give you the most horsepower for your money. For the ultimate performance-minded experience, check out the new PSI Genesis Motors. Contact PSI at 414-622-4555. The Mod 3 class is no doubt the most competitive of all classes. 14 riders have qualified for the finals. The Hill Help are on the mountain to help the riders any way they can. These two decided to show their support by applying their favorite team to their bodies with paint. We always knew the Hill Help were crazy. This certifies it. Last year's 
Irish King of the Mountain number 32, Kim Ropaletto, lost control of his sled at the second catwalk, which ended his day and his season. Kim suffered a broken collarbone, but no doubt will return next year. Number 52, Kevin McRae, fought and scrapped for a third place finish. David Shepard finished second, and Kurt Williamson, number 51, rocketed to the top for a well-deserved victory in the Mod 3 class. Open Mod class is brought to you by USI Tunnel Light Skis, manufacturer of the world's first and finest performance plastic skis in the industry, TS-201. Performer, bandit, available in 5.5 or 7-inch wide bottoms. Also available in 20-inch flatline racing skis. The big boys and their big toys. The Open Mod machines are the granddaddy of the hill climb circuit. The horsepower to weight ratio on these machines are staggering. And, like the modified machines, it takes a special rider to seize this kind of power and artistically carve their way up the mountainside. turned in a gallant effort and was awarded a third place finish. Kirk Williamson turned in his flawless run into a second place finish. David Shepard has taken a back seat to Kirk Williamson once today in the Mod 3 class, and it was not going to happen twice, as he claimed his second victory of the day by winning the Open Mod. The King of the Mountain battle is reserved for only those who win their respective classes. The first battle for King of the Mountain came in the stock class. Number 70, Norm Hebert, was the first to run in the King of the Mountain. He turned in an impressive run aboard his 600 XCR. And now it was time to watch and wait as the rest of the field would pick and choose their way to Hebert's high mark. Number 27, Brett Rasmussen, was the next up the mountain aboard his Articat. had a great run, but more impressive was the hill help that saved Ken Sled from a sure trip down the mountain. Rick Ward was up next on his Indy Storm. Picking a new line from the others, he was looking for the high mark.
Kevin Shearthoss aboard his 440 had a very disappointing run and never made it past the first catwalk. The stock king of the mountain was decided by mere feet. The 18-year-old Norm Hebert made the Canadians proud and was crowned king of the mountain for the stock class. Railmod King of the Mountain is sponsored by Camelplast. Challenger, the track for the serious snowmobiler. Only Challenger gives the performance for the winner. Acceleration and top speed stability, a must for first place contenders. The only track for the professional race driver. There is a Challenger track for every condition. The Trailmod class would pit two friends against each other. Darren Gould against Rick Ward. Darren would be the first to attack aboard his trail mod XCR 600. He turned in what appeared a flawless assault on the mountain. Next up was Rick Ward riding his Indy Storm trail mod. Rick's time on the lower portion of the mountain appeared fast, but as Ward made his way past the third catwalk, he ran into trouble, the kind of trouble that could give Gould the win. When the snow dust cleared, Rick Ward's time was just fast enough to claim the victory. Mod King of the Mountain is sponsored by Starting Line Products. Powered by its acclaimed big bore kit, pipes, power dome heads, and ultralight skis, Starting Line Products Mountain Men literally dominated the 1995 World Championship hill climb. The first machine up in the mod class is Kirk Williamson aboard his Mod 3 machine. How bad does he want this? Just listen to the machine scream up the mountain. He lets off the throttle only at one point, and that was so he could grab more. Next up was David Shepard riding his punched out open mod Polaris. And what a run it would be as he skillfully guided his machine to the top. up against. With two great runs by both Williamson and Shepard, Brown would have to take his 440 ski dude beyond the imaginable limits. would be fast, but David Shepard would be crowned the king of the mountain today. SLP's drivers, including mod king of the mountain David Shepard and trail mod king of the mountain Rick Ward, made Jackson's renowned Snow King ski hill look like a mere speed bump. Sports Tech, the maker of the back thing, knee thing, and thumb thing, is proud to bring you the following crash and burn highlights from the 1995 Jackson Hole Hill Climb. Whether you're a climber, racer, or recreational rider, Sports Tech's products give you the support you need. For a free catalog, call Sports Tech at 1-800-279-7123.
Yeah? How's that turbo? Everything's all right now, huh? Everything's dandy. All right. Except a, a snooking mouth Gotta be the best 